Moved in London. The serve and the forehand have been so impressive, haven't so they? Yeah, Josh, I was just thinking, obviously the roof is closed, so it's not going to play quite as fast as it would on a hot, humid day. But at the same time, really nice for the conditions to be even for all four players tonight. No wind, no outside factors affecting the level of tennis. Oh. Oh. This certainly is going to be a battle from the ground primarily. See if either player looks to try to get in as they have done different times during the fortnight. Game seven. So it's a clean start, like we've seen all tournament for Present. Arena Sabalenka. Yeah, Sabalenka coached by Anton Dubrov on the far right. And they have been through the ups and downs together. And Sabalenka absolutely believing in her team, taking on some of the responsibility as a player, especially when she went through those struggles with her serve. As we see the win predictor with Arena Sabalenka as a 59% favorite. You happy with that? I think it might be a little more even, but this match for me is more of a toss up. I think for Sabalenka, she's going to look to play it on the forehand side. Goff is going to look to go, have go, the go, backhand sure. dominate more often. We'll see what gives. Ball. Love for I think if you take into account Goff's level in her quarterfinal match versus Sabalenka's level in her quarterfinal, you'd give the edge to Sabalenka. But Goff has got so many intangibles. Faults to start, not the ideal way. Yeah, I'm just keeping my eye on the ball toss as well. That was something that was going a bit haywire in the quarterfinal match against Kuschuk, just getting too far in front, and then it wasn't, well, she wasn't able to reach that full height that she's looking for. And quick out of the gates here. Love 40. And Sapolinka in that point not afraid to test the golf backhand. Let us go. That's one of the moves that Sabalenka made throughout that U.S. Open final. She missed a number of those shots, but it's good to see her making that kind of move early in this match. Game Hard and fast through the middle. That's pretty special from Sabalenka. Sabalenka leads by two games to the look. break and wins the set after an early break. Sabalenka way up there at 94%, so we know she's a great front runner. Yeah, well above the average of the top 100 players. It's part of her calling card. She understands Sabalenka how to stretch a lead. A little frustration from Goff with that first service game. Chanda 
what do you think Sabalenka has learnt the most of that? Love it was a heartbreaking you. loss for her in New York at the US Open final. You know, I think she played it well and just didn't execute up at the net, got a little nervous, started losing sight of her targets. That first foray into the net there, it's a good sign that she's willing to make those kinds of moves early here. That is such a big one for golf. The golf moves so well, and even for a player who can hit winners like Sabalenka, you've got to be willing to take some of those balls out of the air, not have to hit three, four, or five winning shots per rally. Those were the moves that cost Sabalenka in New York and bound to be a little scar tissue remembering some of these misses. And this one, again, just didn't quite get in position. And that high backhand volley is one of the toughest in tennis. courtside blinding speed there from Coco Goff wow I mean how she got up to that one and didn't touch the neck considering she had to go full pelt and you saw her almost lean over she's right in front of me courtside here but the balance that these two players have when they're on the run is so impressive possibly the best in the business great angle when well, you could see her adjust her grip just slightly before getting up to that ball just to be able to tap it over that, yeah. that shot and she, had a little bit of everything and she can reach over the net if the ball is coming back on her side so that's legal Time. So what a start from both players McPherson on the right there. Great to have one of Australia's icons here, front and centre, enjoying women's semi finals evening. Fifteen love. Chandra, I'll be also interested to see on the forehand side, Coco Goff has struggled. We know that this tournament. However, the pace of shot from Sabalenka, that might just help Coco Goff because she likes a bit of pace instead of having to generate her own pace. And it really was that last match where Goff struggled with the forehand. Oh. Didn't see as much struggle in her previous matches, but this one I think she would like a little more of the Sabalenka pace. Oh. She started her last yeah. service game with two double faults and another double fault here. She tried to take a little bit off the first serve in this game. It's in the 160s kilometers per hour. So that may be something we see a little more of initially. But not there. Back in the 190s. Perfectly 13, placed. 15. Has the biggest serve of the tournament. 
on the women's side, Coco Goff. 199. Average serve speed has gone up to last year's US Open. She was 172 at US Open. This week, or the last 10 days rather, she's been 183 Ks per hour. Yeah. Equaled the biggest serve of the tournament. 199, Coco Goff. Hold serve. Two against them. Two all. And that game is really an indicator of how golf can work through matches. Not a great start on serve. A lot of players would have really just collapsed mentally. They would have would have let it affect them for two or three games. Golf finds a way to just stay in the moment, get right back to it, and competes. Never lets up on any point. I think that's one of the things that is so smothering about playing her. You, know, you, you look at the skill set and what she can do. Yes, you can go into the forehand. You can try to get some free points there. But she's going to be right back on you the next point and the next after that. <laughs> but you see Sabalenka early. I think learning specifically this from that U.S. Open match, she's got to make these kinds of moves, even if, even if she loses a few points. Golf is that fast. Yeah, she's not comfortable coming forward. She doesn't want to come forward, but most of these shots against a lot of the draw are winners or clean winners. They're not going to be against Coco Golf. She's too fast. Oh. Simply stunning. 3 2 on serve, first set. Sabalenka leads by three games to two. Yeah, it's been a good start from both players. Very settled early on. Yeah, a little shaky from Goff with you know, starting with two double faults, but she's pulled it back together. Got the immediate break back after losing her serve. And it feels like a match. It feels like both players have an idea of what they want to try to do out there. The question is, can they continue to execute? Players attempting to win the second Grand Slam. The winner of this match goes to number two on the rankings. Time. Coco Goff, the US Open champion. In combat right here against Arena Sabalenka, the world number two. 3 2 first set. That's the kind of point 
if I was Sabalenka, I would be playing over and over and over until Coco starts to do something different with the forehand. Because even if it's not an unforced error, this one, it was an unforced error, but even when it goes in, it's, it's that, you know, not too pacey mid-court ball that she can really take advantage of. Thirteen fifteen. Fourth double fault for Coco Goff. Brad Gilbert, bottom right. Joined the team prior to her US summer swing, and boy, has it been successful. Smart serve from Goff. She's taking a little bit off, going more for placement. It's getting Sabalenka stretched out wide. It's not landing too long, so she just needs a little extra rotation over the top of the ball to get that top spin, the kick that she's trying to go for, to just drop inside. But it just feels like it's more of a lack of racket head speed at the moment. Such a devastating shot against Advantage. any player. Sabalenka. Sabalenka's had her fair share of winners. And so far at this tournament, she's been pretty clean on the unforced error department. This match will continue to test that, though. She's got another break point. into the forehand side of Coco Goff, and that is a break Sabalenka for Sabalenka, 4-2. The scream from Sabalenka, an indicator of how good that last point felt. The swinging forehand hit it beautifully, gave herself that extra margin. Those were some of the shots she struggled with the last time these two played. So to hit it there and get the break, that's a real boost for Sabalenka.
Lafferton. That last service game for Sabalenka was only, only the fourth time she's been broken this tournament. Goff again trying to apply pressure on the Sabalenka serve. Fifteen on. Thirteen, fifteen. Just pushing forward so. Confidently tonight. 14, 15. It started in the second game of the match. Sabalinka coming forward, putting it on Goff's mind early. So there are some shots where Goff may miss just trying to go for more, knowing Sabalinka's moving forward. Game Sabalinka. Well, what a performance. What a start from. Arena Sabalenka out to a 5 2 lead in this first set. Well, it's been a fast start from the defending champion and Laura. It's been a, an improved forehand, I feel, from Arena Sabalenka at this year's Australian Open. Oh, definitely. She's always been one to hit it big, but it just feels like she's going for a little bit more margin at times now. Um, you know, the, the difference between the two players is probably the net clearance more than anything else. Uh, Coco just getting more height over the net. So if you compare that to Sabalenka's forehand where she's coming down over the top of the ball, then as the retriever in that situation, you're then going to play up. And, and so she never relents on that aggressive position that she starts the point with. But yeah, it was um, something that as the match went on, in the end, she started to struggle with and almost go for too much. But my goodness, she's playing well so far. So new balls in play after the seven games. Point's got to feel just a little bit better for Goff. Held up going forehand to forehand with Sabalenka. Forced Sabalenka to change direction. Caused the miss. That's the fresh restring, maybe just trying to get a little tension out of it. But look at the footwork, the speed. That's right up there with the best backhands in the business. And you see Coco not really sure where to cover that because Sabalenka could just as easily have gone line. She disguises it. She can hit any angle from this position chooses to go short cross court but it's almost impossible to know where this one's going to go oh. <laughs> and that's 
exactly what you were talking about there, Laura. Thank and you. That forehand is just unplayable. I mean, the net cord maybe gave golf a chance because it slowed it up, but it's just no way to read that shot. So much for golf starts from a good first serve. 14. And that time she hit her target beautifully, combined with the pace, almost her fastest serve of the tournament. Just ask the question Seven here heavy. of Sabalenka. Five, five Forehand heaviness, way above the top 100 average. Sabalenka leading the way at 7.6, and Coco Goff not that far behind. And it seems like Sabalenka is having to hit it, looking to hit it a little bigger tonight than what she's even done in her previous matches. Deserved ovation from the crowd. The poise, the balance up at the net from golf, just holding that previous shot long enough. It's worth a smile. There's much difference in the pace of court know. here at the Australian Open compared to the US Open. They're both hard courts. This is quicker for sure. Sabalenka, it's been stunning. I feel like this court, the ball can sit up a little more, but it takes pace well. And it's been a perfect combination for Sabalenka so far. Thank you. Too. That shot looked tempting. She I, had some space. Yeah, I get the feeling she's so confident. And she sees space just like that. And she's going to go for it tonight. Shot still has to be pretty good, though, because she's got her whole forehand open. So it's a fine balance, this aggression that Sabalinka's bringing. Too much and look at Goff now with the break point. Get back on serve.
Well, Coco Goff getting it back on serve. It's 5-4, first set. Seven minutes, one, five, Hard to put away, isn't she, Coco Goff? Just when you think you, you've got the edge, she just, just keeps sticking around. Well, if you look at this match, it looks like Sabalenka would be dominating. But here we are, back on serve. Sabalenka has won 27 points to 21 for Goff. But Goff is just in there in some of the more critical moments. She just doesn't go away. And she's finding a way to keep the pressure on. Lula Gong finding her seat in the house. Next to Leslie Barry. Leslie Barry on the left there, a winner of the French Open a couple of times. Her husband, Bill Barry, another former Australian player. Time. Shot of Robert Irwin there on the right. Steve Irwin's son. On the Sunshine Coast, Australia Zoo. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Players are ready. I love him. Well, I need to go find him after the match. <laughs> Good luck. Lovely team. The serve, you just got to be careful. If you go wide, you've really got to hit your spots. Such a good wingspan, Savalenka. That service worked for golf a couple of times, but that time Sabalinka, she picked it. Seek off the thinking, trying to make adjustments on the serve. Out wide on the last one, that time changing it up down the tee. Trying to keep Sabalinka guessing here. Ball. 30 on. It's a sixth double fault for Goff. All of them missed the same way, too. Most of them, well, almost all of them going along. And you just feel like she needs to correct herself with the wrist over the top of the ball. She's almost hitting up underneath it at the moment on some of these second serves. Millimeters in it. Just missed. And that is a set point now for Sabalenka. That's a big serve right into the body. And I like that. I think that's a yes. smart serve just to stop Sabalenka from taking big cuts at the ball. She's confident. This one is the perfect serve.
was just use easy pickings for Sabalenka there. Second serve right into her wheelhouse. It's like a training drill. I get the feeling she would have practiced that a lot in the last 24 hours on the court. most players these would be winning shots but not when you're playing Coco Goff that extra ball comes back and that is not where Sabalenka wants to finish it's yes. so hard to slow that ball down enough to play a job shot Sabalenka's ripped the return straight through the middle of the court and then you're trying to balance enough to even make the plus one shot in the first base but to dip into the slice drop shot incredibly difficult shot selection Lucky point has just been shot. more of a slugfest and it's easy to Try to do something a little different. Feel like you can get a quick point. Go off again with a game point to try to get this first set back even. You can't doubt this young lady's fighting capabilities. Go, go, go. Five all. Five against all. From down here, it seems like Coco, even with the double faults and a, a couple of awkward forehands, she seems much calmer between the points. Sabalenka, there's a lot of looking towards the box. There's a lot of, you know, grimacing almost, especially after that missed forehand volley. You get the sense that she's slightly stressed. She hasn't been tested this much this whole tournament. Sabalenka not yeah. having been tested and for golf, you know, she's had a real test, especially in her last match, probably played one of the worst matches she's played in a while and she still managed to win it. So maybe, you know, that relaxes her a little bit more, regardless of how this match goes, regardless of the ups and downs. Maybe that allows her to stay a little calmer. Jane King next to Yvonne Gulagong College. She's got to be liking that move from golf yeah. up at the net. Such a difficult serve when Sabalenka hits it that well. Almost got to cheat out that way and try to cut it off at an angle, but perfectly placed serve at a crucial moment.
32. overran that ball. Four two fifty there with too much time. It's interesting though from Sabalenka. She's been you know, pretty good. Winner Sun for Sarah's this tournament. This match, she's a bit more even. Eleven winners, eleven unforced errors, and a lot of that is due to golf's movement. Sabalenka feeling that extra pressure, and she's missing more yes. tonight. even though she's lost a number of those points. Yeah. But it just still feels a bit frantic. She never feels quite comfortable and relaxed up there. Just wonder if she'll relax more as this match goes on. But at least she made that last one. the pressure because yes. game point she's deciding to serve over to Coco's backhand side I feel like that's a no-brainer as this match goes on hit as many serves as possible to Coco's forehand so that you just get yourself in in the point don't look for just the three points off the first serve of shot and that is a great point for the teenager Coco Goff that she does so well that there's no stat you know you can't read about it but it's the the little things of just holding her nerve and the pressure that she creates with her foot speed her physicality that is what has caused this unforced error yeah, I mean most cases you go into the open court but because Sabalenka has to respect the speed of golf she's second guessing these shots and maybe at the last moment she saw golf stayed and then tried to make that shot better. Caused the miss and the break. So Goff starting to get inside the Linka's head. Well, it's really been a 
a dominant Sabalenka, but for the large part of this first set, but just hasn't been able to get that on the scoreboard. And now all of a sudden Coco Goff serving for the first set. Sabalenka was broken three times in this tournament for this match. She's been broken three times already just in this first set. Yeah. to Sabalenka. I always feel like that is the type of shot she can take as a backhand. She usually does through the middle of the court there. So now it's Sabalenka's turn to turn around the return game. Well, 30 love, I thought she was cruising, and then that turn just flipped the line and things turned around. will be decided by a tiebreak. Yeah, Sabalenka stopped the run. It was four games on the trot for golf. Looking like she might have this first set in hand. And Sabalenka also a terrific competitor. That is being tested fully here right now.
very good. Two, you can see Coco straight away running into the forehand side. She's protecting that cross court forehand. And again, Sabalenka able to hit any corner possible from that position. Okay. Three zero. Yeah, you never Here like go, to see a player go down, but it's like golf. No worse for wear. When you're this athletic, you even fall with balance. <laughs> miss that one but this start of the tie break has been terrific from Sabalenka she's made some adjustments a little more margin on her shots getting the returns back in play not over hitting Needed point for golf. Try to make a stand four, here in this tie break. It certainly felt from 5 4 that her forehand speed slowed down slightly for Coco. And that's really the, one of the first ones we've seen her try and hit through in a while. Just sort of sits in the middle of the box. This is easy pickings. It's got zero direction on it. So well dispatched of here from Sabalenka. And against most players, Goff would have still had a, a chance to run and get to that and scramble. Could not even make a move. That's how big that shot was. Forehand, especially, just looked a lot calmer. She got set up, she held it just long enough. It's important against a quick player like Goff.
Fifteen on. Becoming a real worry, isn't it? That the statistic second serve points won just four of 18 on second serve for Coco Goff. Yeah, that's been the challenge. And you know, even with that, Goff was able to hold enough to get it to the tie break, but can't afford to get down early in this set on her serve. Sabalenka, because she tried to hit yeah. it, but it ended up being out. Fortunate that she couldn't get her racket on it. She kind of just barreled in. That was surprise play. It's interesting when we talk about Sabalenka not looking as comfortable up at the net. She's been a terrific doubles player. Got to two in the world. It's won big titles. But in today's game, you don't have to be as proficient at the net consistently. But I do think it's part of Sabalenka's willingness here to move forward. The fact that she is comfortable on the doubles court. Oh. some volleys that Sabalenka is finding a way to miss. I mean, it, it's interesting. Terrific moves, and the defense from Goff is second to none. But she handled the more difficult one, and that one just didn't get the racket out in front. Almost the whole court to play it into. Sabalenka just reading the play, not overhitting, kind of playing for that second ball on her passing shot. Done that better in the last six to 12 months. Just that extra shape and softness to her skill set. It's very noticeable. Good. 
Dios. Goff just trying to hang on here, hang on to her serve. Start this second set in the positive. Easter famine at times for Goff on serve, her seventh double fault. I think she's just feeling so much pressure because she can sense Sabalenka really coming at her on these second serves, and the percentage is so low, points one on second serve. And when you're missing it long constantly, you've almost got to go after it more, just more spin, more up with the rotation. Oh. Off serve gets a little flat because the toss is just a little lower at contact point. Makes it tough, makes it difficult. It's a good adjustment. Another extended game for Goff on her serve. This one over six minutes. She gets another game point. that golf has hit below the net dropping quickly started with the overhead but she just feathers it nicely softens the hands up just enough First game, First game, second set. Second game. Laura courtside at Tabalenka on her own serve. Hasn't had it all her own way tonight. May have lost a little bit of sound down below. But it's been it's been a struggle for Sabalenka, and a lot of it has to do with the returns that golf is getting back into play. Sabalenka's had a lot of unreturned first serves throughout the tournament, but it's dropped way down today. Just 20 percent of her serves, first serves unreturned. So she's having to play points a lot more completely, and it's been under more pressure. It's 
another one of those shots where Goff, she's got to lean one way or the other to have any chance to catch up to that ball. She was leaning to her right. Sabalenka went left. I'm, I'm good, good again. Yep, you're back. <laughs> yes, Great to have you back. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you guys mentioned the unreturned serves, but one thing that sticks out to me is that Sabalenka, especially on the ad side, is going more with her first serve to Coco's backhand, uh, which tells me just that she's trying to go for her favorite serve rather than the one that's going to get her more of those unreturned numbers. Yeah, Sabalenka, she likes to open up the court. That's how oh, she can get four hands on that first ball, control the middle. And against Goff, you see her going to that favorite serve, that preferred serve on the ad side a little more often. Nothing wrong with that swinging forehand, though. Perfectly timed. That's big, a quick service game, a love hold. For Sabalenka. And Goff has got to feel like she's been serving most of this match with some of the longer games she's had. That last one over seven minutes or so long, and now she's right back to having to serve again. Golf bringing a consistent level of intensity as well. Just matching Sabalenka in a different way, and that helps on shots like that one. Just doing what she can to fend it off, and it's an outright winner. Oh. A couple yeah. of quick service games for both players. So it's Coco Golf. 2 1, second set, first set, Sabalenka. That's a much needed cleaner hold of serve for Goff. She worked so hard to hold in the very first game of the second set. Had to save a break point. Get a much simpler hold of serve. Just gives her, has to give her just a little extra boost here. Last year's US Open went the distance, went 6-2 in the third set, favoring Coco Goff. 
Kirkwood lost the first set 6 2, but won the second 6 3 and third 6 2. I wonder if that is in the back of her mind. I think Goff would absolutely feel like she's still in this match, regardless Don. of the scoreline. And yeah. certainly being on serve here in this second set, break of serve would change everything. New balls, so fresh rackets for both players. There's so much on the line in this match, obviously a spot in a major final. Both of these players trying to get to their third final here at a major. Also the number two ranking. Sabalinka <laughs> currently sitting at two in the world. But the winner of this match will either hold on to that spot Take over number two ranking. Well, what a serving performance from Sabalenka. Holding serve to love and 77% of first serves in tonight. That's a really high percentage for Sabalenka. That's what she's doing with the ball after as well. That forehand's got so much width on it. And then even though she's missed a few volleys, being brave enough to come forward, put the last ball away. Now, Sabalinka, let it be known, the second game of the match, she started moving into the net. Did it again there beautifully. Let us listen. Sabalenka looking to move forward and you know, that seems to clearly be a way for her to improve her game. We know how big she can hit it from the ground and when opponents are stretched out just floating that ball back up the middle, why hit another ground stroke? Easier, easier to cut that ball off, take it out of the air. Another terrific serve from Goff. But it's Sabalinka making those types of moves in a big match under pressure. That's the only way for it to get better, for her to build confidence in that play. Ball. Players holding at ease at the moment. 3 2, Coco Goff, second set. This is just hanging in here, Coco. 
Well, it's pretty incredible when you think about golf unbeaten this season so far 10 matches and counting and just finding ways to win and that's why you can't really count her out and especially in a match like this that's been so close so tight they won the title in auckland start the year a little nervous first round i felt coco here in her opening match one at six three six love and schmiedel over was good until really in the quarterfinals and it was a big struggle against Marta Kostruk, but Time. She kept it together. Got the got the win in the end. Out on Grand Slam Oval where you can watch the big screen. Watch what these players in here are doing. It's been simply imp impressive all night. More of that. It's clean winners galore. That's what Sabalenka hasn't had as much of in this match, but She's still doing an excellent job on serve, just not panicking, even if the ball does come back. Left for serve. I like the higher one from Coco there. Maybe didn't mean for it to jump off the court quite as much as it did in the end, but just a bit of extra topspin because Sabalink is playing so one pace at the moment that if you can try and disrupt that rhythm, it's only going to be a positive. Many players that could nullify golf's movement in certain areas, but Sabalenka did it with that last forehand. Just saw golf have to wait and hold her ground. Too quick to make up that space. for Sabalenka and it's been a while since I can remember Three seeing a match where Sabalenka has come in to the net 19 times. One ten of 19 but that is a lot of time she's been prepared to come forward and finish at net tonight. Well, it's been impressive too because she lost the first three or so points that she came in and most baseliners would have backed off immediately but she's kept coming. funny watching Billie Jean King between the points at the moment because she's like leaning forward she's twitching she's so nervous watching this from the front row oh. 
his trouble. Love 30 on the golf serve. And again, great response from Coco. Thank you. She's just getting down and competing, finding a way to win a point. It's a little different from trying. Goff doing it beautifully there. As we talked about, she is an excellent competitor as well, able to put out missed opportunities, missed chances, and just keep swinging. And she generates another break point. Serve this time straight at the body, body backhand. This just ties up Sabalenka. It stops her from taking such a big swing that we've seen her do so many times before. Champion response 199. That's the biggest serve, equal biggest serve of the tournament. Her second 199 of the night. Yeah. Indeed. seems to find the way to hold on and moves ahead 4-3 second set now golf's been under constant pressure here from the start of this match down 5-2 yep. in the first set manages to take the lead get it into a tie break here in the second she's been under duress on her serve a couple of long games that first one of the set as well as that one where she had to save a break point and see Jung Chin Win getting ready. She has been electric in this Australian Open, especially in her quarterfinal match. Takes on Diana Yastremska, the qualifier in the second semi final after this one's completed. The sensation Chin Win has been. It's a full house here on Rod Laver Arena for the women's semi-finals and what a match it's been so far. 
Irina Sabalenka, the defending champion, just cannot shake Coco Goff at the moment. chances as a player you know you have to capitalize at some stage and it can be really frustrating let's see how Sabalenka handles this game Goff here and a slight opening at Love 30. It's Goff down Love 30 in her previous service game. Came from under it. Can Sabalenka do the same? Second serve. 15 30. Gets the sideline. And went slower with it as well. Was looking for the extra slice, the extra width to get Coco dropping into the slice for home return. Sure, 12 months ago, this Sabalenka would have been able to respond like she is at the moment. Playing with such confidence. Sabalenka's forehand is. It's important that she gets set up where she can hold it, where she can have her pick of places to go. That's allowed her to nullify the speed of golf in that last point again. From love 30, the, the second serve out wide was a was a beauty. So both players having to dig deep on serve at the moment. Four all. Second set. Last backhand, mm -hmm. notwithstanding, golf has started to look just a little more comfortable on serve. She's still been under tremendous pressure, but she's winning a few more points behind her second serve. First serve effectiveness has been really good in important moments. But the, the pressure keeps building here for her. It's another second. Even 
softer. Barely clearing the net. 129 kilometers per hour, and Sabalenka was all over it. Second serve ace. Could almost tell by the toss though that she was gonna go with that serve. What a brave serve at a crucial moment. What a performance. Coco was willing to chop into the left hand in forehand there. She was trying just about everything to get a racket on the ball. The body serve from golf has paid some dividends. It's just been so Sabalenka. constant. Sabalenka, she's standing up close on that baseline. She's intimidating with her returns. Second break point. Serve for the match. That's really been constant pressure on golf serve, and she's been impressive the way she was able to handle it. Hold when she needed to, break to get herself back even. She did break to keep herself in that first set. She's going to have to try to do it again here in the second. No, she's just been under so much pressure. The first serve percentage of 57% is not bad, a little low. Of course, you want it above 60%, but it's the second serve. Uh, this young lady just has been under so much pressure. Sabalenka just stepping up and just crunching everything tonight. Played with such brilliance and confidence. And in that last game, that was the difference. Second serves and Sabalenka on it. It's the defending champ, Arena Sabalenka, serving for a spot in the final.
always the Stay hardest down. game to win. That's only the second double fault for Sabalenka. But what a time for it. Just a, a total deceleration. Just the arm would have felt heavy. It just stopped swinging. Just got a really ex over exaggerated almost. Double fault and then to back it up with an ace. That'll work. There's no start for that, but she would have the highest numbers for response right after a double fault. Not done just yet. 30 all. Only knows one way, Coco Golf. Point number two. the way she managed the moment her emotions she started out aggressively and she had a tough test against golf who fought back as she always does disappointment for the American not having been able to turn things around after turning things around that first set maybe not getting it but sadly because she was so good in the top break 19 years of age go 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 we will see so much more of her. What a champion. So lucky to have her at the top of the sport. Coco Goff. Got close tonight. That deep in that first set was the difference. Well, after winning her first major at the US Open, getting to the semifinals of the Australian Open, there's a lot to look forward to in Coco Goff. But it's Arena Sabalenka who once again reaches the Australian Open final consecutive years.
Irina, why are you laughing every time you see me? Straight away you see me, you, you start to laugh. I just love you. <laughs> <laughs> good one. No, because last time I gave you a towel and I said it's for good luck, I guess it's working, so... <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we'll get to the fun parts firstly. Um, congratulations. Wow. <laughs> First of all, wow. You haven't lost the set on your way to the final. Yeah. What do you feel like was the key tonight to you beating Coco? Uh, well, I think I was able to uh, focus on myself and uh, kind of like I was prepared that she's going to move uh, really good and she's going to put uh, all balls back to me and I just have to be ready to play an extra shot and I, I, was, just, I was just ready for anything tonight and I think that was, that was the key and definitely your support, guys. Last time I played her, I didn't have... I would say almost any support and today guys thank you thank you <laughs> it's definitely felt like home guys thank you so much i really appreciate for all the support for the atmosphere you make this place really special for me thank you <laughs> I think you have a lot more support here than you think. Um, ne next question is about Coco. You guys are, t this is turning into quite a rivalry. You've now played, this is your seventh time you played against each other, uh, especially now in Grand Slams. But I would say it's a healthy rivalry. Do you, I know it's tough, but do you enjoy playing against Coco? Yeah, I really do. It's, as I said before, it's always great fight. She's an incredible player. Um, I really enjoy playing her. Like, win or lose, it's, uh, anyway, it's great matches, and she's a great player. And a great, I'm, I really hope that we're gonna, I really hope that in the future we're going to play many more finals, and I mean, hopefully I'm going to win all of them, but still. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I really enjoy playing her. Now, we are playing in front of, you are playing in front of so many legends here tonight. Um, Billie Jean King is here. Um, and so many, but I want to especially uh, mention Yvonne Gulagong Cawley, the 50 year anniversary. The 50 year anniversary of you winning the Australian Open. Amazing to see you, congratulations. But can you tell me what it's like to play in front of these amazing legends here? I couldn't dream playing in front of uh, you guys. Thank you so much for everything you've done, you've done to our sport. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a pl privilege to play in front of you. Thank you so much. Now, last one. Last question. I don't think you, you, you would usually see this question coming. Uh, after you won your last match, I asked you, no, no, where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, uh, you want to give me another one? Well, I'll ask you this first. You gave me a towel. They are precious. Everyone wants one. And I said, he's winning so much. You probably have about 20 in your hotel room. So you can give me one, which you were so kind enough to give me. I'll take another one, by the way. Um, but what I want to get you to do, if you're okay with it, can you sign it? because then we will auction it off for kids and women um, affected by domestic violence. Is that okay? That's why we love you. Uh, you are such a fierce competitor on the court and I don't think that people know just how kind um, and, and, and compassionate and giving you are um, because as soon as I said it, you said I'll give you another one. So thank you. Thank you for what you do for women's sport as well. You're through to the Australian Open final for the second time in a row. And also, Thank you for uh, your interviews and how much time you give into that and spend time because that's hard to do when you're playing a lot of tennis. So thank you for the effort. Ladies and gentlemen, Arena Sabalenka.